Floss Tube, how are you? I'm Jennifer and this is my channel, Stitching with the Waves. If you've watched me before, welcome back. And if you're here for the first time, I'm glad you found me and I'm glad you are checking out what I have to say. This channel is about my cross stitching and um, a little bit of other stuff, mainly my cross stitching. So today I'm gonna talk about uh, my travel stitching that I did while I was on vacation and then also my Jolly July update. I'm doing Jolly July, which is kind of a challenge, I guess, from Kimberly at Fat Quarter Shop Floss Tube and Priscilla and Chelsea at The Real Housewives of Cross Stitch. They're doing an, one ornament, starting an ornament every day for the month of July for all 31 days. I am switched it up a little bit and kind of doing my own thing, but it is all Christmas stitching. So for the, it's been two weeks, I guess, since I made my last video. And the first week I did some Jolly July stitching and then the, most of the second week we were gone visiting my parents in Houston for like six days or something. So um, I did not take any of my Christmas stitching along. The stitches are all too small. I really like to stitch very petite sized little stitches and I can't see any stitching at all, even 14 count Ada without magnification and lighting. My eyesight is just not good enough for that. So I was determined this time to figure out how to stitch while traveling on this trip. I used to stitch all the time when I went on vacation. I would take a project with me and pick it up whenever I could. Um, but that was like 15 years ago when my eyesight was good. Since it's gone downhill, the, the challenge of figuring out how do I take along magnification and lighting, I just hadn't dealt with it, but I was d really determined this trip to figure it out. Um, I knew when I got to my mom's house, while I was at her house, I could use her big ot light, like floor lamp ot light uh, with the magnifier in it. So that wouldn't be an issue. It was just on the plane traveling there. I had the over a three hour flight that I could spend some time stitching, but what would I do? So I wanted to show you what I used because it was successful. So this is the magnifier I have. It's um, it's kind that has a strap that goes over your head, around your neck, and then it just rests on your chest. So you can look down and see your stitching down here underneath it. So this is something my mom gave to me years ago, but I do believe they still sell them on Amazon or something similar on Amazon. This is what this one is. It's the Easy Mag. Um, and the company is on one of the sides here, Donegan Optical Company. Um, I think it's still available on there. So I'll put a link in the description box to what I think this one particular one is. So it works pretty well. It is not the most comfortable thing having it around my neck, but it works. Uh, and that's kind of what I'm going with these days. So then this is the portable light that I purchased. So it runs on batteries. Um, they're not batteries that you change. It's just, there's a plug here to plug in the USB cord and charge it up. And it's supposed to last three hours on like continuous use. I did not have any issues. I was on a three hour flight. I probably used it for like two or two and a half hours and it didn't run out of battery. It was fine. Um, so it just unfolds like this and you can see the different levels of lighting. You just push the little bar on the bottom and it has the lighting. So I'm able to have the magnifier resting on my chest and then I put the light right underneath it. And the great part about how it bends is that when you're sitting there in the airplane seat, it's not really shining in anybody's eyes on the plane. Um, I tried to be really aware of that because that would be really annoying if it was uh, someone else on the plane with a bright light shining, but it really, it's a very focused task light. So it's not throwing light out across the room. I know when I have my big ot light, um, it is super bright and my husband's always like, oh, you're blinding me. Um, but this one's really a very focused task light and it's just not anywhere near as bright as an ot light, but it was bright enough that because I could get it so close to the stitching, just a couple inches away from the stitching, it worked. I could, I could see what I needed to see, especially because the project I picked was the one that um, is my largest stitches, which would be, um, it's on 32 counts, so it'd be 16 count stitch size. So it worked, it was fine. 
that was good. Um, so that's the stuff that I used to make the stitching possible. And then the project I worked on was my mystery sampler, mystery sal from Tempting Tangles. It's called Quakers in France. And it's super wrinkly from having been traveling, but you can still see. So I was working on this bottom portion of, let me hold it in one hand, of the village down here. So I'll bring that in closer. Um, I did the, some of the little houses down at the bottom and like the fields and hills area over there in the center. So I think you can see that there. All right, so that's where that one's at. Um, so that was part, I think I'm marking on part 10 of the sow that was released. And I believe parts 11, and I know part 12 just came out this morning. So I'm a little bit behind on keeping up with this one, but since it's my travel project, I think that's fine. I've got several traveling, several more trips and actually a couple of stitch retreats I'm gonna go to and a couple of stitching meetups that I'm planning to go to. So this will be the piece that I take along with me just because it has the biggest stitches. Like I said, um, it's like a 16 count because I'm doing it over two on 32 count. Um, and then I have the Garden Stars which is on 36 count over two. So it'd be 18 count, but that P, I mean, it's just massive. Garden Stars is huge. So having that huge piece of extra fabric that I'm trying to stitch on in like a plane or, you know, just a smaller space, I just don't think that would work very well. And then my next smaller project would be 28 count over one. So that's so much harder to see. I think that when I'm going with not optimal magnification and not optimal lighting, this is gonna be the piece I use. So I'm just gonna keep working on that one for traveling. So um, that was my trip when I got back. We just got back a couple days ago. I went shopping yesterday at Goodwill with my daughter, Emily, the older one. And I found the perfect little piece I'll show you to you first. So this is what I found was this little frame exactly like this. It has the bow, it had the, the twine around it here. It was already this like whitewashed color. Only thing I added was this magnet. And I have had Summer from Little House Needleworks finished, the stitching finished for I wanna say three weeks now, maybe a little bit longer. I just had like this block. I had gotten a couple pieces of fabric and I was trying to figure out like embellishments and what do I put it on and all that. And I had gone shopping a little bit, but it's hard to just go browse a store with two kids in tow. You know, they, they're they either all over the place or they don't wanna be there or whatever. It's just a bit of a challenge. So I hadn't gotten it FFO'd yet and I really wanted to get it up in the wall. And then I saw this piece at Goodwill for $2 and I was like, that is gonna be perfect. So this morning, that's what I did. Well, I should show you. Let me show you the full thing first, back here. So it's super cute. I need to get, I think, a stronger magnet because every time I touch it, it starts to fall. I think it will be might be okay once it is just sitting flat on a shelf and I'm not moving it. I just think the stitched and fabric pieces are a little bit too heavy for that magnet that I happen to have. It was just, you know, what I had. So I used, um, I'll show you the back in a second but that's what it looks like there. So I stitched this on, Summer is stitched on 32 Count Lugana in Platinum, one over one, and it's Bell Swath threads. So what I did for this, um, I used Priscilla and Chelsea's method of finishing. So I cut three pieces of sticky board, I covered, used one to mount my stitching, one for this blue flowered fabric and one for a navy fabric. And then after I finished wrapping them on the back, I just glued a washer. So it, that's what sticks to the magnet. And then as I finish the other three seasons, I can just pull this stitching off and put another piece of stitching on there. Um, I would like to, this bow seems to just kind of be hot glued on there. I think I can peel it off so I can change the bows out. I think it's fine for this season. I would kind of like to add something to the center of it here, an embellishment. Um, and then, you know, for other seasons, I might pull that bow off and make a different bow to put on there. But for this, I didn't have to figure out how to make a bow, you guys. Like having this pre-finished board that already had some embellishments on it 
really got me through that mental block of getting started on Philly finishing this and just got it done. So I'm super happy with that. Um, it looks really cute and I gotta fix this magnet issue. I don't know, we'll see how it, see if it stays when I get it sitting on a shelf. Um, I wanna look for some more of those. So it was $2 from Goodwill. This is a little card that came in it. It's a four by six frame. Like it's meant to just be for a picture frame. You'd slip a picture behind those two things of twine. It's from Burns of Boston. So I've got to go do some internet research and see if I can find stores where they sell stuff from Burns of Boston. Because if I could find more boards like that that are already finished with the embellishment stuff on there, I would love that. So that's my finish. And then Jolly July was the rest of my stitching. So I've been doing a three day rotation. I work on one of my Jolly July projects for three days and then I move to the next one. Um, and I'm trying, I've been just kind of sitting down and stitching, but I'm really gonna start trying to focus on starts because I would really like to get all of the little individual ornament sized pieces or motifs in the projects started. Cause the starting is the most like finding the center, figuring out what color you're gonna start with, where you're gonna start, you're gonna start in the corner, you're gonna start in the middle, all of that stuff is, it, it's time consuming. And I think if I could get a lot of those motifs started and then I just have to pick it up and keep stitching the rest of the year, I think I can, that'll help me get the most progress by December on all these projects. So my first one is the Christmas house. I have that little wooden Christmas house that has I think it's 14 different cubby holes that I'm gonna fill with stitching. So I'm doing patterns out of this book, The Magic of Christmas to Cross Stitch from Veronique Anjanje. And the first one I stitched, I completed this ornament. So this is actually technically a restart. I'm trying to see if I can get it to focus somewhere. Did that focus? It's really hard for me to tell with my eyesight if that focused or not, but hopefully you can tell what it is. Uh, it's just a little ornament with a cute little holly border. So I had originally started stitching this. I think it was on 36 count fabric, but I didn't like the DMC on 36 over one. The DMC was too bulky and the stitching was bulky. It was kind of distorting the grid of the threads. So I restarted this and now it is on 32 count Ghana and antique white with DMC. So I'm giving one thread of DMC over one for this project. And that ornament came out great. I absolutely love it. It was super easy to stitch, so much easier to see, so much easier to work with than the last one, like the on the 36 count fabric. So the next one I'm gonna stitch is this little guy here. Um, I'm not stitching the border or the 21, but I'm just stitching the stocking with the little soldier coming out of it because that is more, the stitches are more dense. Like there's a, you know, an area where there's a lot of stitching going on and it's a lot of color changes. Like there's some, you, you, know, you only stitch two or three stitches of one color and then you switch to another color. So there's a lot of color changes in a small area. So I want to get that stitched up that whole little stocking with the soldier guy stitched up to make sure that I like this fabric and I like the DMC and it's not seeming too bulky or causing any issues. Once I see that and I know for sure that this is the fabric I want to use with the DMC, then I want to start as many of these as I can. There are 14 I said, right? I think it's 14. So you can see I marked off, you see my little blue cross hatch marks on there. That's where I've marked off the fat. So like the next ornament will be centered here and the next one will be centered here. So I already have the fabric marked off for that. It's easy to find the center of that section of fabric and start a new one. So I wanna get as many of those 14 started as I can during July so that the rest of the year when this project comes up in my rotation, I can pick it up and just start stitching on one of them. I don't have to worry about where's the center for that one? What color am I gonna start with? All that, it's just, pick it up and start stitching. So that is where I'm at with the Christmas house. And that reminds me, I totally forgot at the beginning of the video to do my Flosstuber shout out. Um, I have somebody who's actually, I mean, I guess it's, he's kind of a Flosstuber. It's Gary Parr from Fiber Talk. It's really a podcast. He does post it as a Flosstube, but the video, there's nothing 
typically to watch. Sometimes he puts some pictures of the patterns they're discussing on there, but it's not like a typical floss tube video where you're watching somebody. So it's great when you're stitching to just listen to him. And he interviews the most interesting people, number one. He has, um, on Sundays, he does the interviews. And then on Wednesdays, he rotates through a few people, including Vanna Pfeiffer, the Twisted Stitcher, and Arlene Cohen, works by ABC. They are like well, chatting partners with him. And they talk about all sorts of things related to stitching, which it is so interesting to listen to. And I pick up so many tips of how to do things, different ways to do things, different ways to think about things. It's just really, really fun. And it's great because there's not anything to watch. So I can also listen to the podcast in the car. It's twice a week. So it's always something to listen to, it seems like. Um, so I really enjoy his podcast. And what made me think of it is seeing this mess. So whenever I show you my whips, there's always kind of a mess hanging out on there. So you can see my thread coming out and it's over here attached to the needle. And I kind of tried to bunch it out of the way so you could see what I was stitching. Um, but so on this little nutcracker guy, I have the thread coming up out of the next hole where I'm going to stitch. So I can just pick up that needle and put it right down, make the rest of that cross. I'm ready to go. Um, that was a tip from Gary, and it's the way he says he, just kind of a time saver thing. When you sit down and you have 15 minutes to stitch, you can sit down and you can just pick that needle up and start stitching. You don't have to think about, okay, what color do I need to get out, find that floss, get it cut, get the needle threaded, all of that. It's there, it's ready to go. I just pick it up and I start stitching. I know what I'm gonna stitch next and where I'm going. So it's just something, I try to always leave my needle with the thread coming out at the next hole, ready to stitch. So when I do have those few minutes, I can make the most of them and just get some stitching done. So that is my Christmas house for Jolly July. Let me review my notes because I seem to be a little all over the place and not going in the order. Why did I bother to take the time to write up the notes if I'm not going to go in that order? Okay, yep, we're good. All right, here we go. <laughs> Sorry, you guys, I'm a little crazy today. Vacation brain, I guess. All right, so the next one is 12 Days of Christmas, which is from, oh, I'm blanking on it, Paulette Stewart, yes, Plum Street Samplers. She posted this um, originally as ornaments and then it's um, all posted on her blog as a freebie. The first two were posted as ornaments in a magazine a few years ago. So this has been out, tons of people have stitched it, but I just loved it and really wanna do it. So 12 days of Christmas, here we go. I'm stitching it as all one piece rather than as ornaments. And I have first day, second day, and fifth day finished. So I'm ready to start sixth day down there. I decided to go down the side first and then I'll go across. So it's three down and four across. So that's where it's at. I'll zoom in a little bit. I did post a picture on Instagram of this and I don't think that you could really see those white snowflakes at all. Um, I chose to do B5200 for those. I tried a couple of other colors first and I really needed the B5200 in order for them to show up on this fabric. So I just thought those looked pretty in white just to give it a little bit more dimension with, the, with that added color. And then my next one is Quaker Ball de Noel from Fleur's de Lynn. Put it back so you can see the name real quick in case you want that. Okay, and then this is where I am at. And again, my stitching's always super wrinkly, you guys. Probably something I need to work on as a stitcher, being less wrinkly when I stitch. So I have finished five out of the, I believe it's 12 squares. So there's 26 total pieces that you end up stitching and sewing together to make the ball. And got joy, Noel, love, and then down here are just like two designs. And then this last one, I just have the outline. I haven't gotten a chance to fill that in yet. So I don't have this one all marked out. I'm just kind of using a ruler to measure over two centimeters each time. So I'm not going to start, do all the starts for this one, I don't think. I'm just gonna keep stitching and just try to get as many of these finished as I possibly can. So I've got five of them done so far. Doing pretty well, I think. That was three days of work and I got five of them done. Of course, this 
squares are the smallest of the 26 pieces. So as I go on and start doing the octagons and hexagons and they get larger, it, there's going to be more stitching and they'll go slower. But at least, I mean, I'm making progress, right? So uh, let's see, I finished one of the motifs for Christmas house, three for 12 days of Christmas and five for Quaker ball, which means I've had nine total ornaments finished, which I think is doing pretty well since we're, I think it's the 11th of July today. So we're on day 11 of Jolly July. And um, I was gone for like six of those days, not working on Christmas stuff. I cheated because I started back in June knowing I was going to be having some trips and stuff this month. So anyway, um, I really, I just want, like I said, I want to focus on some starts. So the other things I have left to do are the spools, wooden spools that I'm going to make uh, stitch pieces that wrap around the spool to make ornaments. And then the other one is candles, like pillar candles that I'm going to have uh, wrap like a stitched piece around that on some stitch band. So I'm trying stitch band for the first time for that. So today is day three of my rotation on the Christmas house. And that means tomorrow I'm gonna start probably the spools, start working on some of them. I'm planning to do them, I don't know, <laughs> I've got a little bit of design work to do. Um, I need to check and see. I think I'm doing it over two on 40 count is what I kind of charted up for a few designs. I've got 10 spools to do and I think I charted out like five designs. So I need to get those printed out tomorrow and play around with it a little bit on the first day of the rotation for that. And then I hopefully um, over the three days can get the majority of those started. Because my plan for the starts is to just um, pick a length of time, like maybe 30 minutes and sit down, start a spool, work on one spool for 30 minutes and then set that one aside. That'll be a start and then start the next design and work on it for 30 minutes. And just that way I, again, have it ready to go and start it up. I might only have a few stitches in, but this starting is the most work, right? So I'm hoping to get that done tomorrow. So that's my Jelly July. That's where I stand, nine out of, I don't remember how many it was, you guys, it was bad. It was like 62 or something that I have. But I'm nine finished and um, maybe 11 or 12 started, something like that. So I've got a long way to go, but we're still only on the 11th, it's fine, I'll get there. And if I don't get there, it'll still be waiting even when it's not July. So the next thing I have is some haul, some things I purchased. Sorry, the table's kind of full, so I gotta stretch way over there to get this stuff. So I had, um, I showed you a few patterns I had ordered in my last video, but this one was back ordered. So this one is from Collection Tra La La, and it's Winter Tableau. Sorry, I should have taken that out of the plastic. I just realized I didn't do that. It was back ordered, so it just came, and I just thought that was really pretty. Now, who wants to hold me accountable? I am not going to stitch this for Christmas this year. You just saw my crazy Jolly July, way too much stitching to get done. That stuff needs to get done for this Christmas. This is super cute, but I'm not gonna start it. So please, someone, hold me accountable to that. This will be for next year. I'm gonna put this away, start a file or something for next year's Jolly July. Here we go, I can start it then, not now. Um, unless I get all my Christmas stitching done before Christmas and then maybe I can start it. Um, we'll see how long that lasts. I don't have any fabric to put it on, so that's gonna help a little bit because I don't have anything to stitch it on, I don't think. Well, maybe I do actually, just now that I thought about it, maybe I do. All right, not starting it, not starting it. Okay, I am great at starting things pretty good at finishing the stitching, but FFOing, I'm horrible. So I have, I showed this in my miniature cross stitch uh, for my uh, 112 scale dollhouse video, which was number three, I think. So this is from Janet Granger Designs. Oops, if I, oh no, sorry. I thought it was upside down, but it wasn't. Um, it's a little bolster pillow, okay? So little tassels on the end, super cute. 
So this is the stitching. All right. It's on silk gauze, and I believe this is 32 count silk gauze. You can't really see that because it's something behind it. Okay, there we go. So 32 count silk gauze. So I finished the stitching. This has been finished again, I think since May or something like that, you guys. So the whole thing, because it's for a 112th scale dollhouse, the whole thing is going to be about an inch and a half long. And it's wonky. It's hard, like, you got to be so careful with your tension on these projects, uh, on the silk gauze. So I'm going to put it this stitching. I'm going to line. Okay. So I lined one edge of the stitching up over here with the edge of the card. And then you can see over here how there's a big gap. It is not straight. So I found a video. Um, there's a great group of petty pointers it's called, or petite pointers. So this is called petite point. And it was a great group of women. And one of them made a video about how to block silk gauze. And she was doing this huge, like maybe eight by 10 rug um huge eight by ten inches it's you know <laughs> not feet um a rug for a miniature dollhouse so she explained how she stitched and how to how to get it blocked so that it's back to being straight because i think if it's not straight it's going to come out the whole pillow is going to come out wonky so what she used was this Korjak tack kit so you've got these uh tacks here this is the piece you put the tack into the base down here and then you can um, push the tack in easily and this is a tack remover tool and then I got three packs of extra tacks so basically what you do is mount your stitching on a piece of foam board thick like half inch foam board and you use the tacks like you pull it straight and put the tack in pull it straight put the tack in and then you steam it with the iron and then after it's dried and you wait a while and it dries, you go back and you pull it straight again and put more tacks in to hold it straight, steam it again. When it's dry, make it all, pull it all straight and put more tacks in over and over and over again until you have your finished stitching piece dead square. So I think this will be it's probably overkill on a small piece like this, but I think that it will be helpful if I ever decided to do a large rug to have done that with this little piece. And I think that this little pillow will come out much better. I know I made a little square, like one inch by one inch pillow that was a little wonky. Um, and I think if I had, had blocked it first, it would have, the finished pillow would have come out much better. So I'm gonna try blocking on this one and see what happens. So again, I finally purchased the things I need to FFO this. So help me to actually FFOing it, please. Someone keep asking me every video that you don't see that finished bolster pillow. Ask me where it is, okay? Because <laughs> I need somebody to hold me accountable on FFOing things. All right, let me grab my other pile of stuff over here. So I mentioned I was visiting my parents in Houston last week. And my mom did a lot of cross stitching in the 80s. Uh, she doesn't do that much anymore at all. So while I was there, she pulled out her cross stitch stuff and was kind of looking through it and getting rid of some things and looking at, she had, <laughs> I come by it honestly, she had several finished pieces that had never been FFO'd that were in there. And then one or two pieces that had just a few stitches left to go. So we kind of figured out the status of where everything was at and she's going to finish up the piece that still needed just a tiny bit of work to get it done. Um, and then she was cleaning out some stuff that she didn't want. So I just have a few little stitchy gifts, I guess, from my mom. So she had a whole bag of rings. That's what you store the floss away bags on. So I grabbed those because that'll be nice to have some extras. And then she had these John James bead embroidery needles. And I know I hear everybody rave about the John James needles. The bead and beading needles that I have are about twice this long and wicked sharp. I draw blood every time I put beads on a project. And so the thing that got me really excited is right here, ball point. So these are a lot shorter and supposedly not as sharp, I'm guessing, from the ball point comment. So I'm hoping that I can use these in my next beading and maybe it won't be such a painful experience. 
And then I have, she had some navy even weave and two packages of linen. Um, some 28 and some 32 count. These are all from projects I think that I actually stitched when I was living at home. So just the leftover, she pretty much, I don't think that she ever stitched on anything except Ada. I might be wrong, she might have used some even weaver linen at some point, but I don't remember any projects that she ever did. I think she only really ever stitched on Ada, so she didn't have any interest in these. So I grabbed those and I think I can use them for something. Maybe that winter tableau will fit on one of those because it seems like the two linens there might be the right shade. So we'll have to check that out. And then she had her magnetic pattern board. So pattern board. So the board itself is metal. A lot of you probably have this. It has the magnets to hold your paper pattern to it. And then it has this little uh, bar that goes across the red line. You can line up with whatever line of stitching you're working on and it's magnifying. So it makes it a little bit larger. I think that might help me a lot on some of the patterns I have. And then she's a little magnetic ruler over here as well. So I've got that from her. Haven't had one of them before. That'll be interesting to use. And then I took one pattern. Most of the stuff she stitched was from the 90s and was really country or just, you know, not my style. So I found this one. This is a pillow that my mom stitched. And I believe my aunt did the finishing and made it into a pillow. And they gave it to my grandmother as a gift one year. So um, my mom has the pillow now because my grandmother passed away a while ago. And I took it for this wreath. I thought the wreath was really pretty and I thought that that might be something that I could put in one of my little projects that I'm working on. It's just like a small motif. I don't know that I'll ever stitch any of the birds, but I really liked, I really liked that wreath. I thought it was really pretty. And you can see they did it just on a little box down here as well. So I took that pattern. Let's see what I end up doing with it. Again, not, not for this Christmas. Hold me to that. Don't let me stitch that this year. So I think that's everything. Let me, where are my notes? Yep, I think we're good. That covers it. So a short one today. My kids didn't come up. They're down in the basement with an old, one of my old phones, you know, that doesn't work anymore. It's not hooked up to anything, but they're down there using it as a camera to uh, make their own YouTube video this time around. They didn't do any stitching. They really wanted to be in the video. I'm like, but you didn't do any stitching at all, you guys. So. It's kind of partially my fault. I intended to take some of those little cross stitch beginner projects with us so they could maybe stitch a little bit on the plane while we were flying, but somehow we got to the airport and I was like, I never did that, you guys. I completely slipped my mind and it didn't happen. So maybe for our next trip, I will get those out and get them packed up and stick them in our suitcase now so they'll be there and I won't forget them. But um, they're, you know, they're busy. They got stuff to do, you know, they have so many interests. I'm just glad that they are interested a little bit in stitching. Hopefully one day they'll get to the point where they sit down and actually spend more time stitching. But for now, they're good, they're here. They are really good, so I need to go find them some sort of reward for behaving during this video. <laughs> if you watched my last one, you'll understand what I'm talking about. Um, Thank you everybody for watching. I really appreciate it. And I really enjoy participating in the community by making videos. And it's great to see people actually comment on them and watch them and, and like what I'm doing and are interested in it. So please keep doing that. You know, if you have anything you wanna say, feel free to put it down there in the comment box. I'd love to hear from you. And if you wanna follow me on Instagram, I am stitching with the waves over there. I post a couple times a week usually. I'm not super active, but I do post over there sometimes on my progress. And it's a great way to see close-up pictures, especially of my miniature stitches, because I know they really don't focus well here on the camera, but on the, on the still camera, the pictures I post on Instagram are a lot clearer, so you can really see a good up-close shot of a lot of that stuff. So I hope you have a great week and are having a great summer and I'll see you back here in a couple weeks for my next video. Bye.